Okay, we're going to look at pole splitting compensation today. And the goal of pole splitting compensation is that we're going to make the dominant pole, omega P1, much smaller while hopefully keeping the higher frequency pole, omega P2, uh, at a larger frequency or at least keeping it the same. So for a 45 degree phase margin, what we want is for the open loop response, to have omega P1 equal to our 3 dB frequency. And omega P2 is going to be equal to our omega closed loop frequency. So this is the frequency where the magnitude of the loop gain that we've been looking at is equal to one. So looking at two stage Miller compensation, we looked at uh, using narrow banding in the last exam uh, example, and uh, what we're going to do now is to look at using Miller compensation. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a compensation capacitor around the inverting gain stage that uh, is the second stage. So we have our initial gain stage, which is our differential pair, uh, A1. Uh, we're going to treat this like it's just a current source, GM1. The second stage, we're going to treat like it's an inverting gain stage, so it's got a gain of minus A2. Now, if this were a true Miller uh, analysis, we'd be able to take the compensation capacitance and put it to shunt, uh, shunt to ground at this node. Now, this is a very large capacitance, and so realistically, we can treat this, capa this node like it's a ground. Okay, so what we have here then is we have some current flowing through this capacitor, Ix, and that current, Ix, is equal to Gm1 times Vi. We know that the output voltage, V out, is equal to Ix times the capacitive impedance, which is 1 over Sc. C. So if we put this all together, we find that our output over input with respect to frequency is Gm1 divided by Scc. Now this, is, this model is only valid at high frequencies. We left a lot of things out there in the analysis, so we're just using this for high frequencies. So what this uh, is showing us, of course, is that we've got a frequency response with a one-pole roll-off. Uh, of course, the gain is uh, infinite at DC uh, in this case, uh, and just to make sure we know we're plotting V out over VI with respect to frequency. What we want to have happen is at the closed loop at the chosen closed loop operating uh, gain, a closed loop, that it meets the second pole of the op amp, omega P2, at that frequency. Okay, in order to make this happen, what we want to do is choose uh, what that second pole frequency is uh, we're going to choose it to equal a mega unity loop gain. So this is the frequency where the loop gain magnitude goes to 1. Okay, so we're making our transfer function equal to the closed loop gain, and we're setting the uh, frequency equal to omega P2. So we have GM1 divided by omega P2 times CC. And this means that our compensation capacitance is equal to GM1 divided by omega P2 times our chosen closed loop gain. Of course, the worst case uh, loop gain is unity. Okay, if we wanted to find a, a phase margin of 60 degrees, all we need to do is make an adjustment to the unity loop gain frequency, which now we know has to be smaller than the second pole frequency. In fact, we can show and will show that it is a factor of 1.73 times smaller than the second pole frequency. 
And hence, our compensation capacitor for a 60 degree uh, phase margin ends up being 1.73 times GM1 divided by omega P2 times our closed loop gain. Okay, we'll do the small signal analysis in the next set of slides in order to prove uh, that uh, these are the correct coefficients uh, for the compensation capacitors.